So my name is Didier Cheche. I'm interventional cardiologist. I work in Clinique Pasteur in Toulouse, France, and I'm in charge of the structural heart disease program at my institution. So the SMART uh, trial uh, was based on the idea that there could be a difference uh, in between the most widely utilized IV platform that are the self-expanding supranular platform and the balloon expandable platform because we know that there may be some uh, differences in terms of uh, hemodynamic performance based on uh, registry, small or larger registries, non-randomized data. So we needed more robust data uh, to understand more about the difference with differences in, in between platforms. And most importantly, the small annuli population is a, a, a specific population into which the outcomes are, seem to be different in comparison to patients with larger annuli. So the combinations of potential differences in terms of hemodynamics in a small annuli made the general idea of a SMART. So two types of devices, uh, as I said, were uh, uh, compared. On one hand, a self-expanding supraannular platform, the Evolute Pro, Pro Plus, FX. And on the other hand, the, the balloon expandable platform, Sapien 3 or Sapien 3 Ultra. So those who are not really familiar with these devices, the self-expanding one is contained within a capsule that is uh, uh, retracted and the device, device expands in, uh, um, in the center of the uh, outer cannulus. Uh, on the other hand, for the balloon expandable platform, a balloon is inflated and that impacts the, the valve, the new processes uh, in the outer cannulus. Uh, so SMART was a global trial. It was uh, set as an all-commerce trial, so the patients had to be first symptomatic, uh, had to have a, a, a small annuli uh, defined as a, an area uh, smaller or equal to 430 millimeters square, and the patient had to be anatomically suitable for both platforms. And what is uh, important, as I said, is that it was a kind of all-commerce, and we even treated bicuspid patients. So the, the uh, patients were randomized in a one-to-one -one fashion and there was a stratification uh, per device and per gender uh, per site. And at the end, uh, 716 patients were randomized in a one-to-one -one fashion. At baseline, so what we saw was very interesting. So uh, first, the mean age, apart from the mean age that was 80, uh, there was 87% of uh, uh, ladies, women, included in the trial. And that's unique because women are most of the time underdiagnosed, undertreated, and underrepresented in a randomized trials. So this is the first trial of its kind uh, focusing on such a large population, a large proportion of uh, women. And the, the mean STS score was in the lower range, telling us about the, uh, uh, although it was a uh, whole commerce with uh, high, low to high risk patients, most of the patients were low risk, lower risk uh, patients. So um, based on the, the part of the globe that we are uh, looking at, it ranges uh, from like uh, 15 to 40 percent. So it's a, it's a quite a frequent finding, this uh, small analyte, particularly in the TAVI population. So it's not something that is rare uh, and it's something that is uh, really important to understand because it may have an impact for our clinical practice and for the outcomes of the patients. Very important. So uh, two uh, co-primary endpoints were uh, analyzed. The first one was more a clinical endpoint that was powered for non-inferiority. It was the composite of uh, a death, a stroke and re-hospitalization related to the valve or heart failure. And there was equipoise in between devices. So we are all aware about the numbers, but what was reassuring was the equivalence in terms of clinical outcomes in between the self-expanding supranular valve and the balloon expandable valve. The second uh, primary endpoint was a valve performance endpoint, and that was really a surprise to, uh, to me. Uh, even as a principal investigator, I wasn't expecting such a magnitude, such a difference. So the hemodynamic performance was superior uh, for the self-expanding platform uh, in comparison with the balloon expandable platform, and this uh, 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 was powered for superiority. So we saw a very important difference in terms of gradients EOAs and patient processes mismatch. So what we expect from uh, any kind of trial, particularly the randomized trial, is to have a meaningful impact for our daily practice. And I have to say that being an interventional cardiologist, this is going to impact my practice. Why? 
because I have the choice to use two different devices, two different uh, mechanisms, modes of deployment. Uh, but at the end of the day, the, the performances of the devices are going to be different. And the small annuli potentially explains the magnitude of that difference. And if we relate that to what we know from the literature, this, particularly the surgical literature, if you have bad hemodynamics and a severe patient prosthesis mismatch, the impact on the mortality is going to be important. So if we think about that, women, mostly a woman trial, women live longer than men, women have more, more small annuli, so it could make sense to use a self-expanding platform at baseline for this particular population because they're going to live longer and these hemodynamic differences may have an impact on durability. So I have to say that for myself, I would tend to use a, a self-expanding supraannular platform for any woman with a small annuli uh, because I, I, I'm anticipating in the future that this is going to, be an, uh, to have an impact on the clinical outcomes. So uh, the first uh, thing that we need to uh, understand is, will there be a separation of the clinical curves in the future? So we need to first wait for the five years data. But given the, uh, the differences, we may anticipate that uh, a significant differences in terms of clinical outcomes may occur at two, three or five, four years. We're going to see that. The second uh, thing that is quite important, it opens the door for these head-to-head -head comparisons in, uh, in between devices because we were kind of afraid of doing that. But now we have smart that, that demonstrate that there may be differences that are meaningful. So we will need to understand if these differences can uh, appear in other populations, for instance, bicuspid aortic valves. Both devices, both platforms have indication for bicuspid aortic valves. Potentially one could be superior to the other one. And we need to, uh, to understand that for ourselves as uh, interventional cardiology, but most importantly for our patients because this, going to be a, a, this may have an impact on the clinical outcomes.